Hey there everyone, it's Barry's Best Honey, I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana. Well folks, we are heading to the highs in town. I don't get out to these, but every 10 days or so, maybe every seven, I try every seven, but it sometimes turns into 10, just with schedules and weekends and what I have off, so, yeah, it's been a while. Um, going out there today to check to see how many made queens. We've got colonies at all except for one, possibly two, should have queens by now if they successfully made it and emerged and all that good stuff. Um, then what we had out there were two that we did walk away splits on as well, but we did those at the beginning or end of February, beginning of March. So those have had four weeks because it is the 30th of March. Then we had the other three that we split out there and, and those were done with unmated queens on two of them. And the cell that I put in was a very, very early cell. It still had probably, I'd say, um, at least three days before it emerged. So that one could be on the edge of maybe not laying yet if she got mated in time and all that. So that one could be an extra week. And then we had that walk away. So that, I'm going to check overall conditions because what I'm seeing is some of these colonies that still had queens in them, as you saw in the video, I had a swarm. I do believe that's a little bit of a genetic problem with that particular colony. I looked back in my book, and do you know, I had another one that made cells, and guess where it came from? Her. So, I think that's a genetic situation with that colony, so, um, but nonetheless, they've had time to build up, and, you know, I haven't been out there in a while. Now, they did have empty boxes, but you just never know. Those queens had a lot of nectar coming through their front door, triggering them to continue uh, laying, they had pollen coming in, another trigger to continue laying. When you got good nutrition, those queens are going to explode on you. Now, we had that major freeze, and I'm going to see if I can show you some tallow trees, what has happened to them. Getting a lot of questions about the tallow. Don't know what's going to happen with it. We've never had a freeze that it got the tallow trees, but I'm seeing some tallows are perfectly beautiful. Others are completely no foliage at all. We have had a privet freeze about, we had a late, late April freeze, but the tallow was mature enough, it didn't affect it, and it got not as cold, and it was an April freeze about six, seven years ago, and it knocked our privet out, and we completely lost it. But I'll talk a little bit more as we as we look through the colonies, but the, the tallow, I don't know what's gonna go on, so all that said to say, the nectar flow with the blackberry is over, so the explosion of nectar coming in has ceased. So now what we have is boxes with foundation on them that they started to draw out and they probably won't finish a lot of it and we've had a slowdown. So I'm not sure what all that's going to mean and equate to in these colonies because the nectar flow out here can be totally different than where I'm at. But I do know where a lot of us are concerned about the tallow. We've never had a freeze in that period of time that cold that got those tender leaves on the tallow. Lee, it, they'll flush back out. You can't kill a tallow, and they made it through some serious 18 to 17 degree weather this winter for two and three nights in a row. But the problem is, how long will it take, and will it be too late in the summer when the tassels come out on the ones that are burned? So I, I, I don't know, we'll just have to see. So let's get on out here. Let's see if we got some successfully mated queens. Um, I know at home I already have some that were done after these, so that's a good thing. So I'm thinking they should have eggs. If they don't, we got problems. But we're going to go check and find out. Well, here we are, folks, out on the job site. This is a colony that was one of the walkaways. Should be, uh, was made queenless, and we're hoping it has a queen by now, a mated queen. This is a split we did. The upper box got the cell. Queen should be down there. This is the one that was weak, weak, weak. I don't see a ton of bees. That's not great, but I also put that second deep on. And they may not have drawn it out that much yet. Uh, or really filled it up. Maybe they haven't exploded. And this is our queen that we moved. So we know she's probably good, so we got to check her. Make sure she's not ready to swarm. Now, a few years ago, I learned a lesson that when the privet got froze out, my early it's also another build-up flow that we do take honey from at times but it really works great as getting them super ready for the tallow if that doesn't come in then i may have to give them some sugar syrup 
and build them into these deeps fully so that I can put supers on them for the tallow. But right now, we don't know what's going on with the tallow. I'll give you an example. I'll try and show you a tallow and uh, point out to you what's happening with them. That brown up there, all that brown foliage, those are tallow trees. They're completely burned. And what we're seeing in those tallows, uh, let me see if I'm pointing to the right tree. It's all that brown right there. All that brown. It's all tallow. And it's completely burnt. Now the privet, on the other hand, it's got its bloom starting to come on. Okay, so we're looking good on the privet. That bloom, that's the bloom right there. And that's, that's a couple weeks away. Since I've been beekeeping, I've never seen the tallow froze out like that and burned. And the funny thing is, like I said, some in the woods are doing fine. I've seen some just a few miles from here in town, uh, further closer to town, that are completely flourishing. But at my place, most all of them are burned. I did find one on my place in, in the trees some, and it's flourishing. So there may be some hidden that we don't see that the bees go get uh, early on. But who knows if this is going to knock out the flow or will it push the flow back? We don't know. We've never seen it. So it's kind of a pins and needles type situation right now. Let's go check for queens. I'm seeing bees coming out of this back entrance here. All right, this is the top. And this is a double screen divider. Now, if I find it queen right... I am going to check the bottom, be sure we don't have a swarm situation going on with the old queen. And then this will get moved one evening because I do want to take all the bees with it. I don't want to leave field bees behind on this particular one because it's got to come off site. I don't have any more room out here. We got one mean one we got to take off site and drop a split down. But let's see if our virgin that we released got mated and came back. I faced my entrance to the rear on these vertical splits like that to try and reorient my queens easier that way they're not flying into a stack of hives with multiple entrances well, first of all always look for her first of course and then flip it and look for her but i got now a lot of times even if she's not made in land you can tell if they're queen right or queenless just from their behavior and if they got a lot of polished shells that means they know she's coming they're just waiting on her I'm going to pull out my flashlight and see if she's started in here. So what I'm seeing on this first frame is a lot of polished cells. And to me, that's always a good sign. That means they know she's, she's on her way. But what they don't know is whether she makes it back off a mating flight. So they're like me. They just have to wait. Let's take another frame here. Got to watch robbing. The, the flow really shut down, at least at the house. We're having an issue with robbing back there. Very, very, oh, it's loaded with bees. Very bad situation with robbing. So this frame is full of nectar. And when I start getting through the middle and there's all nectar, that worries me too, because then I think, okay, they're just stacking it. They're not waiting. They're not preparing. This was a brood frame that they had that has emerged. I see the still a few cap cells. So I'm going to look for her first and foremost, and then I'm going to look for eggs. If I see eggs, I'm finished. That's all I need to see. I see an egg. I see an egg. I see an egg. I see another egg. I see plenty of eggs. So what we have here is a mated queen. I'm going to check the other side. Well, that's good. Because I'm going to tell you, they'll be ready for a double here pretty quick. Yep. Now, I told you I would stop once I saw eggs. But you know what? Sometimes you just can't help yourself. You get so excited when you see the queens mated, you just keep going. But my thing is... I make so many dumb mistakes that I just don't want to hurt her. Kind of like stop while you're ahead kind of guy. Let's look at this one. Oh yeah, so this one here has got milk brood in it. Everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say milk brood. It's brood that's laying its, its larvae, brand new, 
hatched larvae hatched from their eggs and they were sitting in a pool of royal jelly so I'm gonna shine my light Don't know if the camera's picking it up, but we have a very nice laying queen. She will have cat brood here pretty quickly. So that's good news. So we're done here. So that's the queen we released. Good deal. We're happy with this. All right, so something else I do like to check, just putting a box on and you know, assuming they're going to go right up and they're not going to swarm, I check anyway. So this is what I do. So I pulled the top off and they've just started to get into the middle drawn frames. But look at these bees. They're packed. They're just not going up in there. And the flow was still going when I gave them this. But I always rock the bottom. And I want to see what they got down here because they're not going to have any on that. Because it's brand new. But down here, they could have some cells. I see some cups, but I doubt they got anything in them. Although I see a bee working one. We're going to check. All right, so get out of there, bee. All right, let's see. It's, dry, it's bone dry. She was just trying to throw me off. She's a decoy. Another one is bone dry. Probably another one. When they're rounded off like that, now those look like they're vi viable, but when they're rounded, they're definitely viable. They're not even an egg. We're okay. And now I know for another week we're good. Now, of course, there could be one inside, but I'm not going to dig through. If there were more inside, there'd be more on the bottom. What I'm seeing is eggless, dry cups, and a lot of bees. So we got to get them into that box. Do I see the frame? Sometimes I do. In this case, I might. But uh, in the end, we know they're safe for another week. That's the goal. That's what I do right now. I don't go through and inspect 100% of these frames anymore. Um, I don't want to damage a queen. In case you guys don't know what I mean when I say see the frame, if there's any of y'all new to the channel or something, I see the frame up. Basically, I take a frame. This one happened to be a couple frames in from the bottom. I took it out of here. I took a drawn frame from here and put it in the bottom. I just put a brood frame up here and it's got larvae in it and uh, that'll draw some up make them know hey the top's up here let's fill it up we've got to hope for our flow otherwise these frames you know this is where feeding would come into play is i may need to feed if we don't get some sort of flow generator after this freeze we should start seeing more here pretty quick but if not because they don't they've touched them they've started on this one but uh, then the flow must have quit on them. So bring some bees up to the top, see what happens. That's what I mean when I say seeding. I don't do it a lot anymore like I used to. I used to always do it. Um, it definitely works, but I may need to do it just because uh, with the with situation with the foliage being knocked back. This is our first walk away that we did. I had put supers on it because while waiting for the queen, they had a four week break basically waiting for the queen with the cells and all that so they were bringing in all that blackberry nectar I had to put supers on it um, I don't know if they moved any of this stuff out of the top box so she would have a place to lay but we'll soon find out these bees tend to be a little spicy so I'm glad they're getting requeened uh, although it's their own queen that they're making sometimes that helps that's a heavy frame that's nectar you can tell that so I'm hoping the top ain't completely full. I did notice when I pulled those two supers at the bottom one, I could feel in the bottom just by picking them both up that it had nectar in it. So they moved some up. This is full, I can feel it. This is what I'm afraid of. I can't stand when they fill these things up on you before the season. But the good thing is if there is no flow, this will sustain them for the next couple weeks. Full of nectar, I can feel it. So our whole top box is full of nectar. It's another thing I don't like about the walkway splits in the mart. Sometimes you get into that situation. They have nothing else to do but get nectar and that's what they do, pollen and nectar. So that, that's another situation with doing them where you just let them requeen and there's a flow going on. Another reason why I would never feed them right now um, but, 
or during that blackberry anyway. And everybody says, well, they won't take it. Well, yeah, they will. With that blackberry coming in, they will absolutely drain a feeder. Maybe not as fast as right now, but they will drain a feeder. It's not a big deal to have it full of nectar as we go into the flow because it's nothing more than supering up. They'll, they'll continue to fill up, but I got to see what's in the bottom as far as space and how much she has room to lay because if we're just going to rely on that single down below for our brew chamber without having her in this top, well then she's got to have as much space as she can have to really blow up good. God, it's full of honey. Good gracious. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we gotta get some frames in there. My goodness. Maybe when the flow starts up, give them some foundation to draw out for me. Now I left the, you remember this, if you go back to the video, I'll try and put it in the top corner as a reference. This thing was packed out with bees. Four week walkaways, gotta leave them a lot of brood because that's a long time to do without bees and it's a long time before they get bees. But if I got a laying queen by April 1st, I'm good for the tallow flow. But look at the dramatic drop in population because they were foraging so hard on that blackberry. We just gotta hope we got a laying queen. Now one thing about the bees in the bottom, they will a lot of times keep the bottom wide open for her. I mean that's just how bees do, they store their stuff up above them. So we can count on that, but did I leave them some good open frames? And is there a laying queen in here? We should have one by now. See this one's got a lot of pollen in it. We're, we're, we're limiting her on her space. If you're going to have a single brood chamber, she better have every bit you can give her. This is a slam full of pollen. Again, that's why I don't like walkaways as much anymore. Because we give them all that time with nothing to do. And they just load the box. Oh, the nectar, they will use some during this small break. All right, here's a wide open frame. There's an emerged emergency cell right there. Still intact somewhat. Right, because it's on the edge. So we know we had an emergence. Did we have six, another frame full of pollen? So I'm going to have to open this nest up. So definitely going to have to bring some open drawn comb, which I'm actually starting to run out of. Another thing about these queens that are pretty new, they'll have inconsistent egg laying, so you gotta check every cell What I, is what I've found. And also, they're still pretty uh, on the move a lot. Uh, they don't settle down and just calmly walk around anymore. But I think I saw eggs in the sunlight. I'm gonna pull my flashlight out. So I gotta check every cell just because you'll have a queen, a brand new queen sometimes that I learned. I learned this from our mentor, Mr. Ed and I's mentor, that She'll do double shots sometimes. You'll have two eggs in there. You'll have them stuck to the side. Um, that first few days she's laying, kind of getting herself straightened out. So let's see what we got in here. The coverage of the frame tells me something because there's a lot of bees covering it. And sure enough, I've got eggs. There's, a, there's one double shot. No, that's not a double shot, it's a reflection, okay. But I got single eggs. Mainly, if well, you won't be able to see it, but right in here. So she's off and going. So she's got eggs. So I'm not going to dig in this anymore because the day's winding down. But I do know I'm going to come put some empty frames in here, at least in the top. Especially while there's not a flow going on. So they won't backfill them full of nectar. Should I take out one more? Just one more? Yeah, I'm going to take out one more. But there's the queen right there. Look at there. We took it out and look who we see. Look who we see. See how small she is? She still hadn't stretched out that far. Alright, I just spotted her. I'm putting her back in. So guys, I'm up here in the front. We are two for two on queens back there. The situation is this on the seam of the bee yard. That Connie right there. That was the other walk away split we did way back at the first of the month. She should be laying. We won't mess with that one. That one turned into a walk away that I really wasn't counting on being a walk away. This is the one we left the queen in the bottom under the excluder because I couldn't find her and was going to put a queen cell in the split but needed it for another one. So that is again one. I'm not going to check her though because that was only two weeks ago. It's a walk away. So she's got at least two weeks. No sense in even messing with it. Just leave it alone. So that one, I just got to make sure they don't have any kind of swarm cells. This one, I got to check for a queen. 
make sure they're not swarming in the bottom check that one but that had a very very young cell and then check sure they're not swarming down there they may not have a queen yet the reason why is this i had that cell and it was literally about 11 days old which makes that what that's like basically a week after the graft you know dr jeff harris told us in our queen class that you really don't want to mess with cells anything 10 days or less 10 days is all right but i was very gentle kept it in the incubator at 11 days old brought it in so it still had you know four or five give or take what age the larvae was at a minimum it was at least 10 days old so it could have come out in three days it could have come out in four could have come out in five i don't know we just have to see uh, but i'll check in there at a minimum we should see a virgin if we happen to happen upon her but these two i really want to make sure they got queens those i want to make sure not swarming that one i'm gonna leave them alone if i find anything unusual i'll let you know let me zip in these real quick um because i gotta get busy so i'm in this one the one on the end i already found was queenless the walk away the first mm -hmm. walk away is completely queenless and the bottom is completely loaded with pollen complete i mean there's probably a hand a size of a uh an adult hand two of those that have actual space for a queen to lay if she was in there I'm, I'm telling you 10 full frames of pollen and nectar in the bottom and the top of course they didn't do much of nothing they put some nectar up there there's no queen they're roaring they're testy and uh they just didn't make a queen so they'll be combined this is the next vertical i did in the top uh we're gonna look and see if we got eggs i just popped it open your guess is as good as mine on this one but nothing in that spot but she uh she, we still got a few to go let's see they're acting right that's good we might have we might be in business with this one this was the other unmated queen we released uh i got something yeah i got larvae real young larvae the flow has definitely stopped over on this end of town it's pretty bad actually the bees seem to have gotten knocked back so we had that cool weather i really think it knocked them back we had some uh, 40 degree nights and uh, we had that big freeze a couple weeks back and everything has slowed way down. And I'm even seeing reductions in some of the colonies that I put seconds on because they were growing so fast. Uh, if I do feed, this would be the time I would feed. Okay, this one's full of eggs and larvae. And I don't even have my light on it, I can tell. So we've got a mated queen in here, that's good. Again, the next one might be my one that I have to wait another week on. Yeah, so she's getting there. Yeah, I see them now. Plenty of eggs. So that's good. We got a nice population in here. She's starting to lay again. She started obviously at least four or five days ago with what I'm seeing age-wise. Remember, we got at least two and a half weeks before we see any brood emerging from her. So they, they you know, they begin really emerging good second week of April. So that's a good sign. This was that other unmated queen we released. All right, good deal, we'll move to the next. Now remember, there's a chance this one has not started laying yet because it's a very, very young cell. I might have a week to go. I think I'm really at about 10 days right now from when she should have emerged. There's the cup. All right, it looks like it emerged on the bottom and it's torn out. I'm looking for her real quick and then it was destroyed. Oh, there she was. I think I just seen her. Let me make sure. Did I see her? I don't know if I saw her or not. It's the thing too is when they're like that, they're fast movers and they like to fly. I'm seeing beautifully potted shells. I'm gonna pull one more frame and I'm gonna say she is not yet there. Boy, I hope if that was her, I gotta move out of the way of the entrance. I've seen them fly right back to that landing board before. Let me get to the side. Quick look at this frame. Yeah, there's no coverage. When you got eggs, you usually have more coverage. The bees are sparse in this colony, but they're acting right, and they got this area polished. They act like they want a queen, so that's always a good thing, and they're pretty calm. They're a little runny, but they're calm. Let's put them back together. So I got to check the bottoms, make sure we have no swarm conditions. But what I'm seeing, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this. But this one here, I'll, I'll combine it, okay? I checked those to make sure there were no situations. And here's what I'm finding. Obviously, when the freeze came, things shut down big time. I'm even seeing a reduction in bees because these were doubled up because they were growing so fast. They were huge. 
and I'm seeing less bees in the bottom box. But I checked for eggs, we're laying, we got laying queens, but this, this, the frames all of a sudden are sparse, unlike they were before. That's telling me that we either lost some brood uh, in these last few nights of cold or something, but we're set back a little bit. These were exploding colonies over here. So a little disappointing, but that's the nature of the beast. We don't know how this flow is gonna go, guys. Um, if there's any time that I decide to feed, it would be in a situation like this. Uh, this this might this might call for feeding, which I usually don't do in the spring. But with everything knocked back, we got to see what, how the privet's going to do, and if that's going to boost the flow or not for us. Um, I don't rely on that one for my honey harvest i rely on that one if things do what they're doing now to build my bees so i don't have to feed so if the privet doesn't come in with the condition of the colonies and they're not really regressing i guess but they're not they've stopped growing i've seen a, a stoppage well and all i got is a little bit of wildflower if if i have to uh if the privet doesn't come in i'll have to feed them up for the tallow which we still don't know how that's going to do so in kind of a dilemma here the ones at home, kind of the same way I saw yesterday when I was going through a few. We got some issues with them. What I'll do with that queenless one, I won't fool with it no more. What I'll do is, is I'll begin to combine it. It's mean and nasty right now, so it's got to come out of here. I'll see if that one makes a queen. And what we'll end up doing is maybe combining a few of them uh, for the flow. So we utilize the bees and don't lose the bees. But let's see. Let's see what the privet does. You see there's blooms on it. Still hope. No problems. No problems at all. We keep growing bees. We keep keeping bees. We keep working the bees. All right, guys. Well, you see what I'm seeing? We got five that we were looking at, and two are queenless so far. The third, I don't think it's queenless. It's just going to be a little longer. So that's not bad. So hopefully we have four out of five that queened up. This one didn't. We will utilize those bees. But I sure appreciate y'all watching. Once again, I always appreciate you guys' support. It's amazing. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. Hey, share the videos if you can. Let's, let's see if I can hit 10,000. I never, ever imagined doing 10,000 subscribers. This was never started for that. But I'm sitting at about 8,400, I think, or something. So I'm only like 1,500 away. Amazing to me. Amazing. Never even planned on it. So, hey, if you haven't subscribed, I did go look at Analytics. Something I don't usually do. And we're sitting at like 40% of the people watching don't subscribe. If y'all 40% just click that subscribe button, I might can hit that 10K. Just a little goal that I have now that I went ahead and kept this channel going. That's all. So, all right, guys. Once again, appreciate y'all support. Y'all have a great week. It's Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike. And I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful week. And may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.